This one's got haste. And yeah, this one will give us death touch. Yeah, okay. And then we'll go these two. So we get six counters. We have death touch, flying, haste, indestructible, trample, and vigilance. We draw a bunch more cards. Uh, we will go to combat. Today on Commander Replay, we check out one of the scariest hybrids ever created in Indominus Rex Alpha. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Indominus Rex Alpha today. Let's take a look at this opener. Uh, there's no lands in this opener. We're gonna mulligan that one into also no lands. Mulligan again. Uh, this one is okay. Two creatures. Keep this one. What are we putting back? I think we need the creatures, so I think we get rid of the land. I think we can live without the swamp. Man, a Sultai Commander. I feel like I haven't played one of these since, like, 2018. It's been so long. Uh, I am pretty excited to give this one a go. Uh, I did just finish a game with it. It didn't go super good, but that was... The, some bad politics happened in that game. There's a land. One force, that's all it takes. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and play the Breeding Pool tapped right here. Pass like that. This is a cool little commander, so... Let's give it a read. It's five mana for a 6-6. Six, six. As it enters the battlefield, discard any number of creature cards. It enters with a flying counter on it if the card discarded this way had flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Haste, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. And when it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each counter on it. So you discard creatures with keywords and it gets a million keywords on it and then you draw a bunch of cards also. It's, uh, it's a really interesting take on, like, Sultai keywords, and true to the character in the movie, it does just become a big monster that is annoying to deal with, uh, and can chew through life totals pretty quickly, uh, on the battlefield. So, yeah, it's an interesting little Sultai commander, and one that I've been excited to play here for, I don't know, maybe the last month or two. Brings back to our turn, there's an oversold cemetery, could be good later in the game. Let's play the Flooded Strand, crack the Flooded Strand, we'll get something with some black in it. Green black would probably be the most ideal. Do we have a green black? We do not. Might need to update the mana base in this deck a little bit. Um, let's go for the, I guess the underground sea then. Play the Sylvan Library. Uh, there's an Esper Sentinel on the battlefield. We can't pay. And we'll pass like that. Key to the city. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Gonna swing the Esper Sentinel over to the Grease Fang. Confounding Conundrum. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under opponent's control, if that player had another land enter, they return a land. Ooh, that's the anti-ramp card. Ooh, don't love that. Don't love that. There's a little bit of enchantment removal in our deck. There's a Fetid Pools. Sylvan Library trigger. Ristic Study and Demonic Tutor, huh? I think we're just paying. That's a lot of good cards. Uh, play the Castle Garenbrig. Play the Ristic Study. Into the Esper Sentinel again. Let's take a look at what our opponents are playing. First up is Flintlock piloting... Nope, can't pay. Piloting his Greasefang Okiba boss deck. Uh, this one's very interesting. It will discard a lot of cards. Uh, it'll discard vehicles. And with Greasefang in play, at the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So there's some cool effects in this deck. Um, he said he's been working on it. Added a little bit more card draw into it, which I think will be a good thing for him. Uh, it does seem like he would get stuck periodically. One is going to cast their Greasefang into our Ristic Study. Love that. Get this hand refilled and hopefully not have to burn all our life on Sylvan Library. Animate dead. Could be helpful down the road. Gonna use the key to the city on the Grease Fang. Discards and the Kron Monolith. Oh, that one's nasty. That one is nasty. I think he went to combat too. Nope, he can do it right now. Wait. Yeah. I forget how crew works. They don't need... The creature doesn't need to have haste to crew it, right? Yep, there it is. Okay. That's a 7-7. Seven, seven. We have two very nasty enchantments in play, so I wouldn't be surprised if it comes our way. It's going over to the Astor. Uh, so in the middle, we've got Sherry, another Patreon supporter, piloting Aster, Bearer of Blades. This is a really interesting commander. I've only played it once or twice, uh, but it's a pretty powerful equipment commander. Uh, it values super hard. It's not like Brunner in the sense that it's like raw power, but if you want value in your equipment deck, when it enters the battlefield, look at the top seven of your library. You may reveal an equipment or vehicle card. From among them, put it in your hand. The rest on the bottom. Equipment you control have equip one, and vehicles you control have crew one. Yeah, that's... Equip one is really powerful, because then you can just, like, drop an Argentum armor and, you know, plan to cast it and use it all in the same turn. That's good stuff. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. How does that work with, uh, fighter class? Does that make it zero? Bronze plate boar coming in. I use the Ristic Study. Trample. Equip creature has 3-2 and trample. Reconfigure. 
Well, it's not a bad little equipment. What's this one? Kitsune Ace. Whenever it attacks, choose one. Untap it or target vehicle gains first strike until end of turn. Not sure if he's on equipment or vehicles with this build. Uh, and then we have a pickup player piloting Talion the Kindly Lord. as uh, a newer one. Four mana for a 3-4 flying. Enters the battlefield. Choose a number between 1 and 10. Whenever opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. Interesting. As they've got Nephemia the Cacophony coming in. Um, I don't really know what to make of this, but it is a blue-black deck in an open Magic Online game, so, you know. We'll probably just get comboed out at some point. That's usually how that goes. Um, there's a Barrier Breach. Only one good target for now, so maybe we'll hang on to that for a little bit. Uh, let's take a look with the Sylvan Library right here. Land Obscuring Haze. Uh, definitely put the land back on top. Yeah, we don't need the Barrier Breach right now, so put that one on top as well. Obscuring Haze is really nice to have. We're only on four mana this turn. What are we doing this turn? Hmm. Cast an Oversold Cemetery. That's a thing we could do. Yeah, okay. So we'll play the Fetid Pools... Cast the Oversold Cemetery. Uh, this time we can pay for the Esper Sentinel. Next turn we're set up for our commander, but we don't have that many creatures in our hands, so ideally I'd like to find a few more of them. What will we have? We'll have Trample, Indestructible, and Flying. Decent set of keywords. Hexproof would really be magical. Haste and Vigilance, even more than that. Definitely take at least two creatures to get all of that going, though. Braids Arisen Nightmare. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact creature enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the value braids. It does pay for our Ristic Study right there. Yep, gonna do the thing again with Key to the City and uh, Greasefang. Getting back the Necron Monolith. Yep. They copied this one in one of the last games we played with it, and when there's two of these running around, that is... A lot of flying indestructible that's very hard to attack through. <laughs> uh, opponent said, so I didn't notice Sherry discarded a generous gift last turn. And opponents were saying, uh, oop, discarding removal spell doesn't look good. And he said, I consider the cards I'm holding currently more important than the removal spell. And then Flintlock goes, so gas then. Uh, yeah, we might be expecting some powerful stuff to come down here soon in a minute. Opponent's gonna block with the Femia on the 7-7. Yeah, wants to keep their life total nice and high. Uh, 4-3 over to Sherry. And the Monolith gets returned. Uh, opponent, wow, opponent chose Artifact, and... Yeah, I think they discarded one... Uh, they sacrificed an Artifact and, uh, drew three cards out of that. That seems pretty good. Uh, we get to draw with the Rhystic Study, love that. We do need to find more creatures here to kind of get our, uh commander going the way we want to. Okay, so it looks like they're going to do more of a vehicles thing. Nautilid ship enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. I'll happily take that now as opposed to later. Ooh, they get the Necron monolith. Nice. Slow down that nonsense. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may put a creature card exile with it onto the battlefield. Ooh. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Any creatures in here? No, it's a vehicle. Uh, the spell shaper. Okay. Yeah, so Flintlock just lost some cards. You know, one of the things I was worried about this deck is, like, do I have too many enchantments in this deck? And the answer could be maybe. <laughs> could be maybe. Grim Guardian, uh, use the Rhystic Study ability. Also, so, because I don't play Sultai decks really ever anymore, uh, I tried to jam so many things into this deck that I just don't get to play because I don't play these colors very often. Uh, it is nice to have a little change of pace here. I'm playing a lot of red-white, a lot of mono-white, a little bit of mono-red. And as much as I love those things, uh, variety is the spice of life. Death Touch and Haste are some pretty good pickups here. Take a look with the Sylvan Library. Uh, boots are even better. Love a Westvale Abbey. Need the Westvale Abbey just yet so we can put that one on top. No Life Link yet. Hmm. We paying for life right here? Or do we just do more setup? Although, our setup... How's our setup looking? There's not insane amounts of power on the board yet. I think we wait one more turn on our commander. So my plan is probably to get Nature's Will into play, which means we'll just put this guy back on top to try to keep our life total high and hope that we catch a couple more draws with the um, Nature's, or with the Ristic Study. Yeah, we'll cast the Nature's Will right here and then kind of set up for like a bigger play next turn where we can swing with our commander, get doubled mana, and do all that stuff. Uh, we have the one to pay. We'll do go ahead and do that. Found all the enchantments. <laughs> Yeah, maybe Oversold Cemetery. I like Oversold Cemetery, and you could certainly run it. Oh, we have to discard? Oh, no. Oh, no. What are we discarding? Urborg? I'm going to discard Urborg just because it slows the game down. We can find more lands. I like the pace this game has been cruising along at. <laughs> Makes the just tapping lands take so long. 
Plus, there's two other black decks at the table. One of them might play it. There's, like, not that much black in our deck. We've got three black sources already, so I think we'll be just fine. At some point, you have to wonder if, like, you're helping opponents more than it's helping us. Ancient Craving, yeah. Love that. That's great for uh, Flintlock. Oh, uh, they've got the mana to pay. Only one, though. You can choose the Esper Sentinel or the Ristic Study. Yeah, draw with the Ristic Study. Love that. Vengeful Reaper coming back. Yeah, so I'm thinking... Here's a look at the deck list, by the way. I'm thinking because I have Virtue of Persistence in there, uh, this is much stronger than Oversold Cemetery. It might be worth cutting the Oversold Cemetery. Just the, the creature count seems like it's dwindling here. Probably need to get the creature count up just a teeny bit. Would love another removal spell in this deck, too. Uh, what do we got? We got Ribskiff. It's a newer-ish one. 4-4, uh, Toxic 2, enters the battlefield, draw a card, crew 3. Okay, yeah, repeatable card draw, so yeah. Uh, making good on his card draw promises. Uh, in the last game that I played with this deck, the first game, uh, I did have a much faster start where I went Farseek, then Cultivate, and that was a lot of ramp. Um, this one has been much slower, but we are set up with some really powerful enchantments, so, you know, if the game goes long, these things can carry you as long as they stay in play. I'm gonna bring Yarok back into the deck. I had cut it because I'm like, ah, it's too cute, but it does have Death Touch and Lifelink, and Lifelink's not the easiest keyword to get. Although, you know, a lot of the keywords in this deck are interesting, right? So, uh... Flying and Haste are much easier than you would think they would be in Sultai to get. I mean, I guess blue is a lot of flying, but, like, there's more flying in black and even a little bit in green that is rather surprising. There's definitely a lot more haste than I expected uh, for this deck. These aren't known as haste colors. I know green does get it more often now, but uh, there's quite a few black cards that have haste that work into this deck. And maybe not tons and tons, but, you know, probably at least three or four good ones. Which, you know, when I was thinking about this deck was more than I thought there would be. Uh, there are definitely a bunch of newer cards in the deck. Um, so far what I've noticed is Double Strike is the hardest one to get. And that'll probably have to be done through an equipment. And I think that would be a really big pickup for this commander. Just that I have noticed in the early goings here that like, yeah, casting this thing on five, it is kind of a big play. And it does use up like... Everything you're doing is kind of going into getting this thing in play, so there's not, like, a lot of room to really set up equipment and do stuff like that. There's a Westvale Abbey coming back, so we have our next land drop. Love that. Looking to find at least one more creature before our turn here. That would be ideal. Uh, interestingly, uh, Stonehoof Chieftain... If we play Stonehoof Chieftain and Vengeful Reaper, we don't need to cat. We can just leave Kefnet in our hand. Consulate Dreadnought. Yeah. <laughs> So we got two vehicle decks at the table. And importantly, another draw with Ristic Study. Love that. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's Vigilance Trample Haste. Yep, that is a good one. Vigilance is definitely nice. I've come to realize I really love keyword decks. I started that Acroma. Uh, it was Rograk, and then eventually I switched it to Kedis deck, uh, the Boros Keywords deck. And it just, I don't know why. Keywords are so much fun. I, and like, there's something about them to me that, like, the evergreen keywords, like, they feel like classic magic to me, because, like, now there's a bunch of, like, crazy stuff in our hand that, you know, does all kinds of wild things. Like, this is a wild card. Does It's a fun card, and I like it, and it's cool, but, like, you know. There are just wild cards in the game. There are something, like, it's back in the day, I don't know, you would play, like, a Black Knight. 2-2 two -two with First Strike and Protection, right? Like, and that was cool, and that was exciting. So, there is something I'd always wanted, uh... As cards started to get more and more power crept, I'm like, man, it'd be cool if there was a set where, like, you really kind of focus on just, like, those sort of old school keywords and not all the, like, super crazy new powerful abilities that they jam on everything. Uh, and I do like that there has been a little bit of keyword support over the past few years. You know, Indominus Rex Alpha, there was the Abzan Commander, I can't think of the name of it right now, that did care about keywords. Uh, and then, obviously, Seven Mana Acroma cares about keywords and Odric 2. Love that. I love caring about keywords. It just, I don't know, it's something that just warms my heart, makes me feel good. Uh, I enjoy playing it, so I would definitely like to see more of it in the future. And while I'm talking about it, Kristen and I were having a discussion about concerted effort a few days ago. One of the things we realized is that her and I have both been playing Boros for a long time, and we've been using swords for a long time. One of the things we realized is that concerted effort copies protection, which means if you have a sword in play with concerted effort all of your creatures are going to get those protection colors and if it's a sword it's two colors both of us realize that we may have been undervaluing concerted effort over the years uh spreading multi-protection to your team is really good now is that a clunky play by today's standards a little bit but also that is every turn not just yours that that happens so uh concerted effort cool card wish i didn't trade the paper one that i had and weirdly i don't think it's ever been reprinted 
I think it's only I think it's one of those cards that's still only on one printing. Um use a Sylvan Library ability. Yes, please. What do we got? Uh Land Ranger's Guile. Protection spell is nice. Put the land back, definitely. Put that on top. Do we need this land? We don't really need that land either, so we'll put that one on top also. Try to keep our life total reasonable here. Um, and then we shall play the Westvale Abbey. And then we'll cast our commander. Uh, and importantly, I'm trying to leave a green up. Maybe we needed to cast the forest. Uh, yeah, I think we needed to cast the forest to be able to do... Well, uh, okay, yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we have the thing. Okay, yeah, we'll be okay. We will be okay. Yeah, everyone's tapped out also. Uh, Sherry looks like they have the most going on here. Okay, yeah, we gotta do the discarding. Okay, Vigilance Trample Haste right here. That's Flying Death Touch Haste. Trample Indestructible. Definitely Trample and Indestructible. Also, that thing's a million mana to cast. This one's got haste. Hey, this one will give us Death Touch. Yeah, okay, and then we'll go these two. So we get six counters. We have Death Touch, Flying, Haste, Indestructible, Trample, and Vigilance. We draw a bunch more cards. Uh, we will go to combat. Seems like Sherry has the most going on. So we'll send a poke over that way. I am noticing that size is the slightly more difficult thing to come by with this deck. So going to need to work out the balance of like how do you also get size onto the commander. Uh, I did add a Forgotten Ancient because that seems like a great way to do it. Uh, there's the Nature's Will trigger. Super nasty. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, tap all lands that player controls and untap all lands you control. This thing, it was undervalued for a while, like six years ago, and then, then that got real expensive. Uh, this is an immensely powerful card that probably doesn't get played as much as it should. It is very, very powerful. Uh, we untap our lands. This is like Budget Feast and Famine, and sometimes better, because I think it triggers whenever one or more creatures... I think it triggers per player. I don't know if that's correct, but I think it does that on Magic Online at the very least. Um, which, again, I'm not sure if that's entirely how it's supposed to operate, but yeah, it's it's real good. Um, anyway, we've got some things to do here. Let's play the Baleful Strix. Uh, we have a max hand size, don't we? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Maybe we need to add a Reliquary Tower also. Glissa. Let's cast the Kefnet. Got some blocking in play now. I definitely like that. And we'll pass like that. Uh, probably discard some lands. Would we need a War Room? I'm going to gamble that there's not going to be enchantment removal and I'm going to give up on the war room. We'll discard the island also. Creature, to th that's a really good blocker. I don't want to discard it. Kodama's Reach is a dead card with uh, this thing in play. So we'll get rid of that one. And I guess the land is the easiest one. To oh, we still got to keep going. Still got to keep going. Um, Not a lot of enchantments coming down yet, but uh, man, I'd like to have that in the... We do have the Wind Grace of Judgment. Okay, we can get rid of Barrier Breach then. Yeah, protection is super important for this deck, too. While you can get protecting keywords, I guess we have indestructible already. Yeah, you just you want to load up on protection effects because this deck just is heavily centered around your commander being in play and doing the thing, so. Scientists are starting to believe that in addition to the asteroid impact that killed the dinosaurs, that volcanoes may have also played a significant role because increased volcanic activity has been linked to each of the mass five extinction events on Earth. Soul Rain coming in. Ristic Study and Esper Sentinel. There are some really cool cards that I want to try out in this deck. Let's take a peek at the deck list. So, Soul Tie stuff, uh, I don't get to use all that often. Wizard Class, if you have it upgraded all the way, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. I'm pretty sure how it works is that Indominus Rex, when it, you draw a bunch of cards, when it comes in, then you'll also get a bunch of counters on it, uh, which seems really, really good if you can, like, work that out it's you know you're probably not going to do it on turn five but later in the game if your commander gets blown up um that seems like a really good play profs idic memory also seems incredibly good enters the battlefield draw a card no ma no max hand size at the beginning of combat on your turn if you've drawn more than one card this turn put x counters on target creature you control where x is the number of cards you've drawn minus one so you know like if this is in when you cast your commander your commander just gets much bigger uh seems fantastic the no max hand size is important Definitely going to add a Reliquary Tower here. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, Sultai with Reliquary Tower is just like the colors. Sometimes the colors bite you. I'm going to cut the War Room for it. I don't want to discard it. I don't want to get rid of a colored land. And your Sultai should be drawing enough to not need a War Room. Oop, Arcane Signet into the Ristic Study. Ristic Study OP. <laughs> Legit question, how has this not been banned at any point in the last 12 years? Opponent's going to use the key on Braids. <laughs> but yeah, when I was looking at building this deck, uh, I was looking at all of the uh, the class cards. I'm like, ooh, which class cards can I run that I never get to run because I don't play these colors ever? And uh, 
I ultimately didn't run any of the green ones, but I really wanted to. <laughs> really wanted to. Tortured Existence could be very solid for this deck, too. If there's a creature in your graveyard that you want back and you want to switch one with, switch it with one in your hand. Um, again, it might be the thing that I'm running too many enchantments, and we just need that big one at the top end that just brings them straight back into play. Um, that could be a thing also. I would love another piece of, like, spot reanimation in the deck, too. And I don't know, maybe reanimate is just better in that slot. The weird thing about this commander is that, like, once you cast it, I haven't found a way to sort of, like, re-up. You're like, right now we don't have First Strike, but we do have Death Touch. I would love to find a way to get First Strike onto it, but... Ooh, what? Protection from mana value 3 or less, that's disgusting. When it attacks, it deals 5 damage to each opponent. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, like, we didn't get Lifelink on our commander either, and I would love to get Lifelink on. Uh, 3-3 three, three can't be blocked in our direction. Yep, can't do much with it. This has Lifelink. You know, we might be trying to get that into play. Does anything make multiple bodies? We need... Oh, uh, what we could do... Well, we could use the Nature's Lore, but that would take two turns, and our life's starting to get low here. What is it, five mana on this thing? Yeah, five to make a human. At some point, it may need to think about the uh, Wing Grace's Judgment, leaving that up, although Nature's Will does help that a bit. Call the Bloodline. Uh, discard, yeah, that's a good one. Make tokens, more discard outlets. Draw with the study. Netherland. Grease Fang trigger. Returning the Reaver Titan to the hand. Uh, do we want to sacrifice permanent? Nah, they can just keep drawing. I like what we have. Down to 16. Do want to find that lifelink. Man, Sherry got cracked down real quick. They're at 7. I guess we're down to 16, but a lot of that is self-inflicted with Sylvan Library. Ooh, Sherry plays a Shockland, goes to five. Hope they've got some lifelinks somewhere. Thunderhawk Gunship. Enters battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two warrior tokens with Vigilance. When it attacks, a cre attacking creatures you control gain flying until end of turn. That's pretty good. Draw with the Rhystic Study. Uh, Flintlock was saying that uh, the 40k cards are now available on Magic Online as of maybe, I don't know, a month ago or something like that. And... Uh, he was saying that those were a big upgrade for the Grease Fang deck, and he's like, if you see the newer vehicles, you gotta get rid of them, because in this deck, because he's bouncing them constantly, like, it just makes so many bodies with all the tokens that they spit out. I think Sherry's going full defense right there. No attacks. Yeah, I mean, if they had lifelink, it would make more sense to attack, but they do not. They do not. Fourth land for opponent, finally, on turn six here. They're definitely behind where they want to be. Do they go straight to the commander? Or a thief? When it dies, you gain control of all enchantments. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. There are a lot of good enchantments, and we have most of them. We have most of them. Use the Rhystic Study. Tropical Island. I don't see the Sack Outlet yet, which is good. Oh, it has flying? Oh, no. That makes it such a good blocker. Gross. Well, we're not going in that direction. That will be an absolute headache. Where did that Barrier Breach go? Might be needing that. It's in our graveyard. I think there's one card in the deck to get it back. Heroic Intervention is... okay. I was trying to do the math. I'm like, does that protect our enchantments? And not really. <laughs> not really. Can keep our other stuff alive, though, which is nice. Sylvan Library. Use the ability. There's the Forgotten Ancient. It's about time to get that one. Uh, Definitely put the land back on top. Uh, Since we already have one protection effect, I'm going to put the Heroic Intervention back on top and just assume that we'll get there with uh, Rhystic Study at some point. Play the Tropical Island. Play Forgotten Ancient. Play the Boots. Forgotten Ancient and Esper Sentinel. Uh, I want to leave up our Ranger's Guile in case we need it. Always yes on the Forgotten Ancient. So yeah, I was looking at how to get more size onto the commander because that does seem to be a struggle. And Forgotten Ancient is a great way to get size on a lot of things. So uh, it seemed like a really good choice for this deck. No keywords, sadly, but this is the kind of thing you just want to have it in play anyway. So, And it's like, you know, if you just give this trample late in the game, it can kill someone. <laughs> It just gets really, really big. Put the boots on our commander. Try to keep our commander alive from anything bad that might happen. Yep, opponent's going to try the anything bad that might happen right here. Uh, that is an anguish done making. Yep, yep. So, Rhystic Study, Forgotten Ancient. We'll just go ahead and Ranger's Guile this thing right now. Another trigger on the Forgotten Ancient. Love that. Draw with the Rhystic Study. There's that heroic intervention coming back. Fizzle the anguish done making. Get the boots on. Go to combat. Still just leaving the other guys on defense for now. We'll send this thing into Flintlock. There's the Nature's Will hit. Love that. Get that sweet, sweet mana doubling. Um, what's next? Cast the Glissa. Oh, we gotta be careful with the green mana here. Yep. Get more blocking. Forgotten Ancient. Getting bigger. And I think that's about all the things that I wanna do. 
yeah, that, that seems like... Oh, no, we want to move the boots. Put the boots on the Forgotten Ancient. I don't want the boots on our commander um, because we want to move these counters over to our commander at the beginning of the upkeep. Yeah, pass like that. Uh, fetch lands are bad with the thing in play. We'll get rid of that one. Key to the city. <laughs> Flintlock said, still had to make you have it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you got to try the removal right there, right? Opponent's got a coffers in play. Good thing we didn't play that Urborg. They'd have a ton of mana right now. Instead, they're only getting three. Love that. Love that. Makes you wonder, does this deck really need an Urborg? <laughs> you could live without it. Forgotten Ancient, Ristic Study. Esper Sentinel. Uh, Bomat, Bazaar, Barge coming in. Just Battlefield, Draw Card. Oh, yeah, we saw that one. I think they just hard cast that one. Yeah, they did. There's a fetch land. Those aren't super helpful for our situation. Did we play a land last turn? Yeah, it's turn seven. We're on seven. I think we're fine. I feel reasonably okay with this Obscuring Haze in our hand. This is a nasty card, by the way. Uh, because no one's counting on the free fog when they go to combat. <laughs> it just, like, it doesn't show up quite enough that, like, you're thinking about it. Unless you're, you know, just, like, a very experienced player. And a lot of times it's still just praying they don't have it. <laughs> we can, we can buy ourselves a lot of time with that, which I do like. Yeah, they're gonna get the five damage one, and notably that is damage. Uh, so this would prevent that if we cast it before, while that triggers on the stack. Um, but still, we're probably going to lose a bit more life here. Part of me is considering getting Scavenge Brawler uh, and just trying to find a way to get it into our graveyard so that we can put Lifelink on our commander. I guess uh, this might be the better way to get Lifelink. We've got four other creatures, and I don't, I don't necessarily want to sacrifice all of them. But we can find, like, maybe a couple cheap creatures to just throw in and get rid of. Although, yeah, we haven't really ramped, so the mana might be tight for that. At least to get the thing before combat. Crew one on the... Flying thingy. Uh, opponent gonna... 10-10 uh, coming to us. What do we have? We have Indestructible. Doesn't have Trample, so that should be fine. Still losing five more life. This is gonna take Sherry down. Sherry goes down. You know, I did consider using this to go get a Counterspell, just in case things go wrong, and I kind of wish I did that now that I'm in this moment. Now that I'm looking at a blue player that's about to untap. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we should have got a Counterspell. Uh, yeah, block the 10-10. Wait, is it at Flying? Oh, protection from three or less. Oh, we can't block with the Galissa. Does it have death? This has death touch, so this will kill it. I guess they, I guess it'll just live in their graveyard and they just do it again next turn. So, there is that. Yep, down it goes. Braids and Greasefang. Yep. Uh, how many creatures are in our graveyard? I think we actually sacrifice Baleful Strix. If yes, we're gonna sacrifice the Baleful Strix because that's our fourth creature, so we can just get it back, which is with the Oversold, and then, you know, that's like an easy card draw right there. Also, you know, just trying to keep the life. There was a two life on that. Yeah, loot two life on that. So it's getting down there now. Three, four. Yeah, that's our fourth creature. Excellent. I was planning on sacrificing that to the Ormondal, but it may just be the case that we need to like... How much commander does they have? It has seven commander. Uh, we need to cast a couple spells. So this would put five power on there, which would make him 11. Yeah, we need a few more spells to try and make that happen. If opponent cast a spell or two, it would not be the end of the world. Do you attack with this or do you leave it back? No, they're going to leave it back. Okay, yep. <laughs> Anything we need to do at the end step? We could do this. Draw a card, then you may return a land. Let's draw a card and hope we don't get punished for it. Oh, Flintlock's thinking. Don't like that. Don't like... Okay, he passed. Oh, there's also a blue deck. Yeah, no, we probably shouldn't draw this card. This Drawing this... Oh, yep, here we go. Here we go. Because also... If our commander gets blown up right here, we have no creatures in hand to discard to recast it. I guess that means we would just have to look into other avenues at that point. Oh, opponent's just going to scoop. Okay. Uh, we draw a card. So, Flintlock versus Indominus Rex. Carnage Tyrant is a creature that we may need if the thing dies. Uh, do we want to use the ability? Nope. We can finally play Fetch Lands and Ramp again, which is nice. Now they're going to make a knight. Knights are okay. Knights don't bother me. Uh, Forgotten Ancient and Oversold Cemetery. What are we going to get with the Forgotten Ancient? That's really expensive. That'd be better to reanimate. That's cheap. That's really expensive. That'd be better to reanimate. I mean, we just reanimate the End Race Forerunners and try to swing out. They've only got two mana up. Yeah, that might be, that might be the play. Uh, return the Baleful Strix. Opponent's going to make another knight. Yep. We do have a lot of flying. So they don't seem to have much flying blocking. Use the ability. Move the counters to our commander. Return the Baleful Strix. In two games here, in two games here, Oversold Cemetery is underperformed because the second any graveyard exile goes off, uh, Oversold just kind of stops working. 
use the ability. So it's not been as good as I would hope, but maybe getting the creature count up is the right place. But I think you only need like one or two of these, and I think I'm running too many of them. Eh, take a look at the Sylvan Library. Yep, yep, there's the good one. There is the good one. Do we need the big... The big card draw would be very good. Put Ronas back on top. Put this thing back on top. The question is, is anything actually going to survive? And I don't know. Two or more basic lands. We have only a single basic land. That would come in tapped. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, he's pretty open in the air. That's 11. That's 17. And Enrays should do it. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, that should be plenty. Uh, so, Baleful Strix. We draw the Virtue of Presence. Um, let us now animate dead on the old Enray's Forerunners. Opponent says, there it is. Yep. Yep. We've been sitting on that. Equip to the Enray's Forerunners, or attach the aura, rather. Uh, yeah, I think we just go into combat here. Uh, is there anything else we need to do? I guess we could Farseek first. No, because if we do that, then, uh, I guess, uh we play the Windswept Teeth. Then Farseek, just in case. Also, pumps up the Forgotten Ancient a little. Uh, get an Overgrown Tomb. Send him. Do we have Team Vigil? Oh, wow, this gives the Team Vigilance? Oh my god, this thing's so good. I honestly wish they would ban Crater Hoof, because that would force people into using Enray's Forerunners, and Enray's Forerunners is really good and can win games, but is not the, like... Crater Hoof makes damage numbers irrelevant, basically. Enray's, like, blocking still matters to some degree. Uh, it's powerful, and, like, at least one player is probably going to die. Maybe two, maybe three, but, like, you can you can theoretically survive an end raise Forerunner. Surviving a Crater Hoof is just... It's very, very unlikely. Uh, we hit Nature's Will, Will Trigger. That must be a first strike in there or something. Oh, yeah, that's Glissa. Yep. And there it is! Indominus Rex taking it down. Yeah, love it. Uh, this is a fun little commander. Uh, I haven't been buying stuff in paper right now, but if I were, I would probably build this deck. This is a Sultai deck that speaks to me, and, uh, definitely feeling it. Um, I do, lo like I said, I do love keyword decks, I just like playing keywords, and obviously this does that really well. Um, the one drawback with this deck is that you gotta get size on your commander somehow. And that's still, uh, that's a process that I'm working out still. We saw the Forgotten Ancient, where is it? Uh, right at the end there, which is definitely a great way. i got to find a few more cards like this that are just good for pumping up the commander. Getting that extra damage. Maybe find a little room for double strike would be a good idea, too. I do think I need to reduce the number of enchantments in the deck. Tortured Existence, I think, might be too cute here. Oversold has been a little bit cute. Um, I think I want more early card draw. It does seem like we just need to draw relentlessly with this deck. So I'm going to start with a Harmonize. Uh, at one point, I did have Harmonize, Ancient Craving, and Ambitions cost in the deck, and I would love to have all of them. But uh, I just ran out of deck slots, plainly. Man, we could still use, we could still use like, two more creatures in the deck. Uh, and the cool thing, too, is that I think this deck will still work really well on a budget. Like, you don't, the Commander has enough power built into itself that, like, you don't need all the expensive stuff. So I think you could do a really cool budget version of this deck. And then, you know, skip stuff like the Ozolith and... Are these expensive in paper? It's a Mythic. It looks like it might be. Um, without actually looking at it. I do think, uh, what's that two mana? There's a vic Victimize is a card, although I don't know that Victimize is super great, because you don't always have, like, extra bodies laying around with this commander. So, anyway, my final thoughts on this commander are, it is cool, uh, it's a lot of fun, but it does have the problem of, it comes out and looks really scary, because it'll have a million keywords on it. Um, a lot of times it's still only a 6-6, six -six, which is good, but, like, it still takes you a lot of turns to kill someone with a 6-6, six -six, so until you get it pumped up, it is it still doesn't kill the fastest, and there is just a lot of setup. Like, this commander asks you to build your deck in a certain way, so it's not like you can have tons and tons of, like, removal and other stuff. You can have a little bit, but getting... This is one of those decks where getting the balance right is really critical. If you've ever played, like, a Kalia deck, um, I would say that this isn't as bad as Kalia, because Kalia is very demanding about how you build the deck and getting that balance correct. But uh, but similar to that, you do need to get the balance right in this deck. I don't think I've done that yet. I would love two to three more creatures in this deck. I just don't know where to get them. You know, all of these cards are 
things that I feel like I need. It probably involves cutting like a removal spell or something and like, oh, I don't want to do that. It's already removal light. Maybe I've got a little too much no max hand size. Oh yeah, we do need that reliquary tower. Oh, we did add it. Okay, we got the reliquary tower already. But overall, it's a lot of fun. It's worth checking out, but it does have that problem of like, sort of like a Voltron commander where it is big and scary, but it's not killing you as fast as you think. So you're probably going to eat a lot of removal and you'll probably soak up a lot of attention at the table while the value deck that's just ramping like crazy out of control uh, is going to shoot past everyone while everyone's focused on you. So uh, I do see that being a theme with this commander. But I also do like that the flavor matches the character in the movie, which is that it's just it's big and scary. Like you're very scared of it when it comes in play. Definitely like that. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like or subscribe. Thank you for watching.